show. Uh, too bad you're not here because uh, we're having a really good time. Are we not? What you just saw occurred in 2021 at a Methodist church affiliated with Emory University, a Christian university. For the vast majority of Christians who oppose same-sex relationships, it's their understanding of the Bible and what the Bible teaches on the subject that constitutes the heart of their objections. In the case of marriage, even though the Christian tradition has historically affirmed marriage as only between a man and a woman, what the New Testament teaches about marriage is that it is fundamentally about a covenantal commitment to one's spouse. It's about self-sacrificial covenant love that reflects God's love for us in Christ. Same-sex couples are just as capable of living out that kind of a relationship as are opposite-sex couples. And so I think that to include same-sex couples in Christian marriage only deepens and strengthens what is essential about Christian marriage according to the Bible. In this video, we discuss the real truth about gay Christians. If you wish to watch that video, click the link in the description. Assist us in spreading biblical truth. Subscribe and enable the bell symbol to get notified when new weekly videos are published. Like, share, comment, and watch our videos all the way through. Thank you for your help. America is slowly but steadily deteriorating, morally and spiritually. Do you recall when a French newspaper published a caricature of Muhammad in 2015? Around the world, people were outraged. After a week of uh, often violent worldwide protests over an Islamic, uh, anti-Islamic film, a French magazine has now published cartoons which Muslims say ridicule the Prophet Muhammad. These cartoons are very derogatory toward the Prophet Muhammad, and of course, the timing is critical. Tunes just published in the French magazine Charlie Hebdo lampoon the Prophet Muhammad, showing him in suggestive poses. CNN is not airing those images. The magazine also mocks a Jewish rabbi. But it's the cartoons of Muhammad coming in the wake of deadly protests in more than a dozen countries over an anti-Islamic film. A student of Emory University mocks our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who came to this earth and gave his life as a ransom on the cross to save humanity from the punishment of sin. But the media either celebrates or remains definitely silent on the depiction of Jesus as a homosexual. Why is there a double standard? Why is the media being silent on this issue? According to CampusReform.org, a photograph featuring Jesus Christ as a gay man was recently featured at Emory University's Senior Capstone Showcase. The photo was a self-portrait by Emory graduate Tommy Greenler, who in the accompanying text raised speculations about Jesus' sexuality by asking, quote, Why did he spend much of his adult life living with 12 male admirers? Why was John the only disciple present at the crucifixion when many Gospels confirmed that Jesus loved him in a special way? Greenler asks. The article goes on to say the following, quote, In the photo, Greenler poses on the cross with red painted nails, dons fake blood, and wears a crown of thorns. But it has become pertinent and essential and necessary for us to get a biblical view of this rapidly increasing and normalizing effort to accept homosexuality in our culture. We need to understand what the Word of God has to say. There is so much confusion on this outside the church, that's explicable, but there seems to be about equal confusion inside the church. In fact, there is a new kind of evangelicalism that labels itself tolerant, loving, non-judgmental, that is affirming those who carry about and legitimize these kinds of lusts and behaviors. And they do so while maintaining the name of Jesus Christ and an affirmation that they themselves are Christians. And the evangelical church must stick with a biblical definition of sin and confront the sinner with every sin, whether conventionally popular or not. And there is a massive movement to appease the guilt of homosexual behavior, and it is a fierce guilt that needs relentless appeasement. There is a massive movement to somehow free these people from their behavior that is the result of unchecked lust and to make them feel okay about what they do. There was an effort to redefine it as an acceptable alternate lifestyle, sexual ori orientation, genetic difference, or personal preference, but it is not that. 
Frankly, Tommy Greenler's artwork is neither artistic nor outstanding. One can only question why a purportedly Christian university would display and promote a cheap piece of artwork designed to incite controversy. This is terrible and shameful. The fact that unchristian university promotes something that mocks the creator of the universe is both humiliating and frightening. So don't let anybody tell you that it's not loving if you stand flat-footed and speak the truth about this issue of homosexuality. What's not loving is to look someone in the eye when God says they are in jeopardy of an eternity in hell and merely wink and nod at their sin because you're afraid of being called names. One of the most common objections to the Christian position on homosexuality is that homosexuality can't be wrong if it doesn't harm anyone. Homosexuality is sin. Romans chapter one, for example, makes it very clear. So first and foremost, homosexual, homosexuality harms the person who engages in the practice. And number one, because it, in many ways, it dehumanizes them. The essence of our humanity is that we're created in the image of God and he creates us male and female, these two corresponding halves of humanity. Secondly, homosexuality is harmful because it harms the gospel. Marriage is a living, breathing picture of the relationship between Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. If this is only a show of talent and not an insult to the person of Jesus, we challenge Tommy Greenler to create a comparable artwork of Gay Muhammad. He probably won't even consider it, let alone execute it. Amazingly, churches today that are supposed to represent God's kingdom open their doors and their arms to these people who do this kind of deviant behavior and embrace them. The World Council of Churches and National Council of Churches decades ago declassified this as a sin. Finally, the foundation of Christianity is built on two fundamental principles, love and truth, which are not mutually exclusive. We must love everyone enough to tell them the truth that God will judge and punish sin, but that forgiveness is available through Jesus, and that anybody who repents of their sins and calls on the name of Jesus Christ will be saved. Amazingly, churches today that are supposed to represent God's kingdom open their doors and their arms to these people who do this kind of deviant behavior and embrace them. The World Council of Churches and National Council of Churches decades ago declassified this as a sin. Major denominations ordain those who practice homosexuality, both men and lesbian women, to the pastorate. Quakers, of all people, say homosexuality is no more deplorable than left-handedness. We have a homosexuals among the Episcopalians and a bishop in the Episcopalian church who is openly engaged in homosexual behavior. A one pastor of a Methodist church near here said, I quote, a homosexual is welcome in this congregation and will have all rights and privileges. And the emergent church, kind of the new wave of the church, doesn't take a position on this. They're not sure about anything in the Bible, and they're sure they're not sure about this. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 2 Peter 3.9. Amen.